right, and we are back. All 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 right, and we are back. Right, and we are back. And guys, today we're back with another reaction video. Uh, this time we're actually gonna be reacting to another video by Chat History. Now, if you guys remember, last time, uh, I actually explained why I would survive in ancient Egypt. Since there's a 95% chance that you'd stick out like a turd in a punch bowl amongst a well-tanned, weird-talking population, you'd probably be captured and sold into slavery. Tough. Yeah, th that's most people. That is, that, honestly, that's how most of you guys would end up insane and i would feel bad and if if we all went back together i would actually save a lot of you uh but you know obviously i can't save all of you you know i'm, I'm just, I still gotta be a pharaoh but you know for most of i would save you guys you know the lord the day ones you guys are getting saved all the day one subs you guys are definitely getting saved you know unfortunately some of the you know unsub people you know if you just watch the videos but you don't sub i, I mean i'm sorry i want to save you uh, this is going to be a similar case here because this time I'm going to be proving why I would survive in the Oregon Trail. Now, I know some people are saying, how would you survive the Oregon Trail? Oh my gosh, you wouldn't survive. Guys, I already beat the game. So it's like, I already got the, I already got the tactics in my head. I already know how to do that. You know, that's, that's the easy work. Uh, so guys, yeah, we're going to be getting into the video. It's going to be a good one. It's called why you wouldn't survive the Oregon trail. But again, I 100% would survive the Oregon trail. Uh, now guys, I also just went to a family reunion recently and my, you know, my great grandmother, Emma right here, uh, all her children, you know, including my, uh, my very own grandfather, you know, shout out to, to John, John Rucker. Can you, can you guys see it? Can, can you, can you see John? there you go there you go so yeah guys uh, i actually like the shirt too that's why i'm wearing it on this video uh and i had a good time now does that mean i'm gonna be going out to hang out with my family all the time from this point on no uh it does mean that i had a good time and that's the most important thing and guys for you if you have a good time the most important thing for you is to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. You never know what I'm gonna post up next. I want, I'm want i gonna start posting a lot more of the science, religion, the history, get back to the roots of the channel of variety, you know? Uh, so yeah, guys, more on the way is coming soon. Uh, and with that being said, make sure you also subscribe to Chat History. Link will be in the description below. Hit that like button down there, subscribe button over here for him and for me, you know, cool things happen it changes your life guys you literally you, you look right here you hit that like button bam you, and then you go right around here you hit that subscribe button bam life changed you know you're getting great content all the time uh so with that being said guys i, I do have to mention this one last thing uh you know obviously youtube makes me say this but it's the whole if you don't like comment subscribe youtube will and this is serious guys YouTube will come through that door right over there and they will. Why you wouldn't survive the Oregon Trail. You're sponsored by Incogni. All right. <laughs> oh boy. Ah, oh, I love the Legend of Zelda scream there, guys. I'm a huge Zelda fan, by the way. So I just love the little, the little things you hear in these videos. Looks like the witch got you again. This time, you gracefully land in Independence, Missouri in the mid 1800s. Okay. Everyone's packing up and moving out west to seek their fortune in greener pastures. And you don't want to get left behind. Think you have what it takes to blaze the trail? Let's find out. Let's go. Since you've just been thrown into this reality, you're only as good as the skills that you can provide. As we all know, okay. there's only three kinds of people in this world. Bankers, farmers, and carpenters. No okay, so... I think I'll be the banker. Nothing else. And thanks to good old democracy, you are now... Ah! A crafty carpenter. Okay, so I would be like a carpenter slash banker. I would build the bank. Um... Super easy, guys. Just build the bank with your carpentry skills and then use that to translate over to banking. You know, 
you get five pieces of wood plus another five pieces of wood. You got 10 pieces of wood. It's the same as running a bank, guys. I, you know, prove me wrong. You enjoy getting hammered and occasionally nailed. You've got some solid survival stats and okay. decent savings. Good choice. Now, this is this is you guys, though. Again, my, this is you guys. And occasionally nailed. You've got some like, solid survival my survival stats and skills deep savings would probably and my savings would be a little bit higher and my survival skills like for my crafting personally is it's probably like 75 uh you know i'm adding another 25 to each of these stats you know i'm like 95 dexterity you know 30 focus uh you know like what was that 45 you know 40 speed you know it, it, it's good you know 50 agility it, it's good choice not that it was yours anyway. Here's your complimentary wife and two adorable little cherubs to okay. help you on the trail. Look how cute they are. Your mission is to travel down. I don't even have words. Look how cute they are. This is creepy. This is why people think AI is so creepy. <laughs> your mission is to travel down the soon to be famous Oregon Trail. Over 2,000 okay. miserable miles of dirt, disease, and death, formally established in 1836 to help pioneers move out west. But why would, but why would I move out west, you might ask? Because you want to. But more importantly, the U.S. government wants you to. Look, the eastern <laughs> states are getting all congested, industrial, and smoggy. So the United States needs to do some good old expansion. Thanks to the Louisiana Purchase in 1803 and the Oregon Treaty in 1846, there's a lot of fresh open land to settle. Yeah. Why live in the economic decline of disgusting cities in the East when you could manifest that destiny and fill up those lungs with fresh air on the fertile plains? <gasps> That's good air. If the opportunity of prosperity wasn't enough to convince- Ah, man, if you guys don't know about this painting here, a very important painting here, this lady is supposed to represent like America and you know liberty and stuff. Now, if you notice to the bottom left here, there's some Native Americans running away while pretty much industrialism and all these little trains and boats and you know good old Americans here are coming in uh to take over. This is manifest destiny in a painting. Uh, because this is America manifesting its own destiny to take over all of the current, uh, all of the country, you know, all those native lands. Oh, give them, give Native Americans a state. Ah, fooey. We got power lines to put up, guys. Look at her. She's holding power lines. Crazy school book, you know, because they're going to they're going to teach these people who they consider savages uh, how to be uh, sophisticated like uh, Americans with these books. Now, what that really means is they're going to put them into schools and you're never going to hear from a lot of them. And then they're going to show up uh, like 200 years later and they're going to find a bunch of graves, unmarked graves in those former schools. And you're going to be like, dang, there used to be a lot more Native Americans. Sure did. They sure did, guys. Since you had us free land sound. Thanks to the Oregon Land Donation Claim Act of 1850, pioneers can claim up to 640 acres, 2.6 square kilometers, of land completely free. Wow. Time to get... Now, in the... 2.6 square kilometers of land completely here's free. Here's the tricky part. This is going to be the trickier part of this. Now, I know... And I, I know this may come as a lot of a big surprise to a lot of you. I'm not white. So me surviving in these times may be a little bit difficult. But again, I'm me. So I would still be able to overcome. You know, even in those times, there were those specific people that just rose above, you know. I would have been one of those people. I would also try to free a lot of people too, you know. Everyone from this tree is getting freed. I don't know about y'all. Uh, so yeah, guys, I know this is adding a little bit more to why it's going to be more difficult for me to survive, but I'm guaranteeing you, I will be able to overcome those circumstances, guys. Time to get supplies. Look, if you're going to be slogging down a few thousand miles of rocky trail, you're yeah. going to need to be well supplied if you want to stand any chance of surviving. Pioneers stocked up their supplies in trailhead towns, just like Independence, Missouri. Things like okay. food. Clothes, yeah. tools, livestock, and perhaps yeah. the most critical American asset, guns. 
Because when you're out on a seemingly endless sand ocean, anything's fair game. What's to stop a desperate thief from stealing your precious supplies and or daughter? Your gun. So be sure that you're well equipped to donate a few lead slugs to their cause. And of course, you could also hunt for food if you need to. When it came to food, yep. a family of four would need about a thousand pounds of the stuff. This was usually beans, rice, flour, sugar, coffee, and dried meats and veggies. Okay. Don't forget your pots and pans and your fresh water barrel, or else you'll be washing down your salty deer jerky with a cup of dried rice. For tools, you're gonna need to be making repairs when stuff breaks, and stuff will break. Since you're a carpenter and know how to carpent properly, Obviously. you're set with a hammer, a saw, and an ax. And of course, you'll need some spare clothes, otherwise you'll be walking around with some breezy cheeks. In order to haul- Now, I would probably use my carpentry skills to translate into sewing and stuff too. You know, if you know how to, you know, hammer a nail, you can sew. I, I don't have any proof of that, guys. Just, just believe me. All of your stuff down the trail, you're gonna need a big old wagon. This sucker right here is a prairie schooner. Not as beefy as the heavy Conestoga wagons used for shipping freight, but you can still fit so many supplies and family members in this bad boy. With four ox power, tricked out wooden wheels, and a non-existent suspension, the kids will be uncomfortably wobbling down a trail at a spine-shattering 15 miles per day. You and your wife, however, will be getting your steps in the entire way. Every day is leg day on the Oregon Trail. So with a modest okay. eight now. That's a little bit new. Uh, I don't know if I'm personal. I'll probably just get a bigger wagon. You know, I, I I just get a bigger wagon for me. That way, I can like just ride on the wagon. I know a lot of people wouldn't be able to afford it, but at this point, I'm gonna be a carpenter slash banker. There's very few things I wouldn't be able to afford in this life, and I know, oh uh, man, it's so difficult. How are you gonna be a black carpenter slash banker, guys? I'm creating my own bank with carpentry skills. And I'm translating carpentry into banking, and I'm just going to be a really great banker. I, you know, yeah, there's going to be some racism and stuff that tries to stop me. I'm not, bro, that's not stopping this banker slash carpenter. I'll just carpentry some protective stuff to protect the bank. You didn't even think about that. $100 to your name. You talk to the general store owner and place your order. Yes, sir. What can I do you for? Well, about yep. 20 bucks, but I'm kind of looking for some supplies. Sure thing. Take a look around. Yeah, can I get, uh... What's a sponsor? <laughs> that. Are you sick and tired of getting stupid spammy? That is a great little... That's a great ad there. Uh, and guys, you already know how I do with ads. I haven't done one of these in a while, so this is going to be a fun one. Uh... You know, spam emails and marketing calls. I'm going to go ahead and take over here for you, buddy. Emails or marketing uh, calls from companies you've what never done business with? I hate you. I know that in order to make these videos, I've had to navigate quite a few websites for, you know, research purposes. Yeah. Only to get bombarded by spam calls afterward. Yeah. Evil scumbag data brokers yoink your personal information and yeah. sell it to companies to make a quick buck. And that's why you guys need Incogni, uh, because it will help secure your information when you're online. I am sure of it. I'm pretty sure that's what this is for. Because, guys, your data is very important. And you know who wants that data? Companies. They will pay data brokers to get your information, your search histories, all that stuff, guys. You don't want that. You don't want them knowing that you were looking up some random feet stuff at 3 in the morning on Google. You don't want to, you know, and you think incognito works, but, it, you know, they still... They still get that. Guys, you know, they're going to learn and you're going to be getting random shoe ads on all your stuff recently. And that's just not cool. You only wanted to look at, you know, feet for random purposes at two in the morning. You were not looking for shoes. So, guys, stop that from happening with in Incogni. You know, Fuck. important stuff like your email address, email your address, home address, your shopping habits, home address, shopping even your habits. legal name. Don't look at that. Legal name. They're trying to sell all of that stuff to people, guys. They trying to make sure you get all those random random phone calls to your cell phone at like three o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon. You know, most of you are at work. Some of you don't have jobs. So you guys should answer that phone. You don't know. There might be some good opportunities there. But for everyone else, you guys need to avoid those phone calls even happening. You have jobs to go to, guys. But you can fix that. The truth is, we all have a legal right we to are, yeah. politely request that these companies remove our information, yep. but that requires a lot of paperwork, which can a take A lot years. of paperwork. And that's where Incogni comes into play, because they're going to look at all the paperwork. They're going to be like, you know what? 
I'll make that phone call for you. You know how when you were a kid and you didn't like making doc, you know, it was like, oh, my mom's making a doctor's appointment for me, you know, and then you become an adult and all of a sudden you got to make your own doctor's appointments. This is like that. They're going to go through. They're going to be like your parent. They're going to make that appointment for you. They're going to do the things that you don't want to do as an adult, and they're going to do it in a better way than you could have done as that same adult literal years that's years. where cogni comes in to scrub all of your they're gonna save years off of your life guys honestly you can't afford not to do it you know incogni they're gonna scrub your history from the internet they're gonna make sure ah did you want that person to have your information no get it on out of there personal details off the internet their legal team forces these companies to delete <coughs> your personal information from their that. servers when i signed up the legal team their legal team is beating the crap out of these data brokers. Incogni showed me just how many companies have been profiting off of my identity. So. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. No way, that, that's not nice. Within the first- No, it's not. It, it's kind of nice though, because the number, but like outside of that, it's not. But they're going to be looking at all the people who look at your information. They're going to be like, hey, do you, you sure you want that? Are you sure about that? And then they're going to be like, you know what? Get on over here, guy. We're gonna make sure you don't sell this person's information again. First day, Incogni had sent out 127 requests to have my One data day. removed, with 71 already being completed. completed. Now my phone is back to being completely silent, returning me to my void of unending loneliness. Thanks, Incogni. Nice. So if that sounds like a good deal, I've got an even better one. You what can up? support the channel by signing- Guys, go to his channel. The link again is in the description below. Go to go to incogni.com forward slash chat history. Now you're gonna use the code chat history. Now it's one word, it's chat and it's history. Those are two words, but you're gonna be combining them into one word called chat history. And that, my friends, is gonna give you 60% off of the incogni services. Now, guys, that means you're only paying for 40%. And they're going to be getting 100% of your information off. So really, you can't afford not to do this. You're actually losing 60% of the theoretical money by not doing this. Because you're going to want to do this. Again, you don't want that information out there. Those brokers, they're looking to sell the crap out of that information. And you are going to be the victim of that unless you get incogni. You know, incogni.com forward slash chat history. That's forward slash and not the backslash. I know they look different, but you have to look on the, the way it's leaning. If it's leaning towards, you know, towards the right, uh, you know, that means it is forward slash guys. So make sure you go to chat history.com and, uh, or no incogni.com forward slash chat history, put in the code chat history, get 60% up today using code chat history at incogni. 60 percent 60. 60 i love you so can i just get one of everything yeah i'll ring you up you better get used to that wagon because you're about to spend about mm, six months in it you've got this is the theme from legend of zelda this is when you get into like hyrule you've got almost 2200 miles of trail ahead of you but you're not alone in fact, over 400,000 other pioneers are also making the trek. Just don't make too many friends because you'll end up burying some of them along the way. About 10% of those who hit the trail ended up really hitting the trail. For better survival stats, many families opted to form traveling caravan groups consisting of dozens of wagons to support each other. But having so many people around inevitably led to disagreement. Yep. Hey, can you pass the beans? Uh, I don't know, can I? The fuck's your problem? So in order to avoid dis- Yep, those are the type of people that get shot right there. Cause you know, it's the West, it's the old times. You know, you're just being annoying like that. Those type of people don't really survive. You know, all you people who love being super annoying on like Twitter and Reddit, y'all not surviving the Oregon Trail, buddy. I'm sorry. Now that's death number two for you guys, but I'm still alive. Sending into complete chaos, leaders and officers were elected to direct the caravans, laying out agreed upon ground rules, dictating what to do in certain events. So if grandma slips and takes a wheeler 50 to the spine, we all know who gets all of her stuff. Yep. Enjoy those dentures. Proper planning gave you those. These concrete rules were designed to prevent arguments down the line. But of course, humans will be humans. Yep. <laughs> I just wanted some beans. But you're a simple fella who makes simple decisions. So you're probably fine, right? What could go wrong? Being on the road for about a month now, you've passed through a few forts and landmarks and besides a few snakes and your son hucking some stuff off of the wagon for fun, things have been going pretty well. Huh, well, 
time to put the carpenter skills to use and make repairs. Oh, yeah, I'm fixing While there's this some downtime. Hurry. This ain't even a big problem right here. This is like, I'm fixing this within an hour. The family has like, an opportunity to catch wood. up on some chores. Just remember to keep your guard up and avoid any, you know. Hazards. Since your wagon conveniently broke down next to a freshwater spring, your wife is able to replenish the water supply before washing the farts out of your family's clothes. Meanwhile, your daughter feeds the oxen and your son laps up water from a brown puddle. Look at him go. Oh wait, that's not- No, that don't, bro. You're, you're about to have dysentery or something now. We didn't even have time for all that. I'm sorry. I love the kid. He might get left. Not good. Your son is going to quickly learn about a little thing called cholera. You see, there oh, are plenty of diseases cholera. that plague nice. the Dusty Trail, like mumps, measles, and the dreaded dysentery. But cholera was by far the worst. Contracted mainly from contaminated water sources where fellow pioneers expelled their evils, cholera could kill within hours and spread just as fast across an entire caravan. Symptoms included extreme nausea, vomiting out your front, vomiting out your back, dehydration from all the vomiting, leg cramps, restlessness, irregular heartbeat, glassy eyes, and perhaps the worst symptom of all, death. Yeah, that's Oh my bad. god, he's dead! No, no. Now, again, I do have a feeling that my kid in this scenario would be a little bit smarter than to just drink random brown water. You know, we just saw a freshwater pond, your mom's washing and stuff in there. Now, I know that's going to make the water dirtier, but maybe go to the other side or something. I don't know. Like, bro, what are you doing here? Like, what are you doing? We got water. We got some fresh water. Why are you even drinking brown water? First of all, I'm tell I'm teaching my kids about not drinking brown water. That's just weird. So if you're doing this, yeah, I'm sorry. He was already getting left. Uh, we got to bury you now. And I don't know if we really got time for that. He could just have cholera. Disease alone was the biggest killer on the trail, with estimates of over 30,000 deaths. So, best to avoid slurping down brown puddles. Yeah. Sorry, son. Not only were diseases a guaranteed add to the death count, but so were injuries. Even something as simple as a small cut could easily be infected. With the extent of medical treatment being no more than, mm. eh, put some whiskey on it. Your prognosis wasn't too promising. He's so when little yeah. Jimothy falls off the wagon and shatters both tibias, he's now the trail's newest speed bump. If you were afflicted by something, Dang. the best you could do was rest. Resting was crucial for pioneers. I love this Souls reference here. But guys, I would, you know, again, and I know I've been saying this a lot, but I feel like you can convert those carpenter skills into being a doctor. Uh, so for example, you are you know how to cut wood. Now you know how to cut other things. You know how to like uh, hammer up things. You can, again, r translate that back to sewing. You go into sewing, now you can sew up people. Guys, oh my God. Being a carpenter in this world was OP for me. Now for you guys, that results in 10 deaths. But for me, that means I am super OP. Like I know, I because I'm the type of person that will translate the type of things into other things. You know, I'm seeing a hammer and a nail. I'm like, bam, that's one thing. What can I translate that into? Oh, you want me to uh, help put a new screw in somebody's foot? I, I'm doing it right there. I'm a carpenter slash doctor slash banker uh, slash uh, I, can, I can work with fabrics, you know? Also, I'm a good hunter. That's not related to carpentry, but it is something else. So, you know, I'm, I'm just adding on to the list. Again, you guys would have 10 deaths right now. And me being a great everything, carpenter, doctor, everything, I would save. I would probably save about nine of you. So there would only be about one good death right now. But for everyone else, you know, you are going to have to, you know, pay me. You know, you're going to give me food from your cart, you know, some supplies from your cart so I can keep doing my thing after I saved your life. And that might help. That might actually kill you later on when I'm gone and you're not around. So we're still back to 10 deaths. Like if it felt I saved nine people, but then I had to grab supplies from them to like compensate me. So, you know, then later down the line. They like I'm I'm saving people in my general vicinity, but the moment I leave you guys, it's over for you. We're back up to ten. If they didn't stop to rest frequently, they ended up taking a dirt nap from crippling exhaustion. But not only was physical mm. health a concern, but mental health as well. Mm. There were quite a few up here, up here. 
you know, a lot of people ending it themselves. Two reports of people throwing themselves off the wagon of life when their mental health deteriorated from not only the monotonous and seemingly unending voyage, but seeing the constant line of rotting bodies of fallen pioneers. It was pretty common to pass several dead travelers every day on the trail, so you gotta think that that's pretty demoralizing, especially if some of those travelers were your friends and family. Even today, some of these graves still mark the end of many pioneers' journeys. Mental health yeah. really was no joke. Take still isn't today, guys. That's why you gotta be mentally tough too. And now the count's all the way up to 68. That is a lot of people. You know, again, I'm a personable guy. I'm gonna be making friends down the trail, not like close. For I'm gonna be making a lot of associates. It's gonna be sad, but at the same time, the people I'm around are always gonna feel like they're safe because they're around me. But then again, those people weren't around me when they passed, so it was like, I feel bad. So I'm gonna feel bad, but I'm still gonna make it to the trail because I got a bank to open up. Take for example, the famous story of Elizabeth Markham, who was pushed to the brink of insanity while on the trail. In the middle of their trek, she hit a point of exhaustion where she simply refused to travel any further and nothing could convince her to carry on. After hours of failed encouragement, her husband and children were forced to abandon her and move on. After a while, her son was sent back to get her after she had rested. Bad move. Elizabeth eventually caught back up with the rest of the family, but left her son in the dirt with a rock lodged in his skull. Oh my when God. her husband raced back to find his son still barely alive, Elizabeth set fire to the family's wagon for good measure. Oh wow. And continue down the trail if everything you own is reduced to a cinder, can ya? Not only were humans a danger to themselves, but so was almost everything else, especially nature. High wow. winds, yeah. strong storms, blazing heat. Yeah, you gotta think, you're in the middle of America, so now you're starting to get a lot of the, the crazy, like you're in the tornado zone now, so you gotta make it out of there quickly. Uh, like if it's, what's tornado season around like, is it like spring or summer? I don't even know when. You know, I, we just had a tornado warning in Ohio. I'm in Cleveland. We had a tornado warning like a week ago. That was insane. Freezing nights, they all did what they do best. They happened. You also had to watch out for wildlife. Wolves, bears, yeah, yeah. snakes, coyotes, yeah. Yeah. and buffalo. They were all out. Now, snakes, you know, um, those are probably the number one on my list because I just don't enjoy snakes. Uh, bears, I'm, you know, I, I again, I, I'm getting the shotguns and stuff. I'm blasting all these things. Not to get you and your family. I'm going thanks to firearms, American. humans were able to get them back. Okay, also, I want to talk about this photo right here. This is a sad photo in so many ways because this also is a photo that represents the, like, the end of, like, Native Americans in this country of America that I live in. I'm part Native American, uh, you know, from my father's side of the family. It, you know, this stuff is very interesting to me. So one of the presidents, and I believe it was Andrew Jackson, actually told people to go and completely kill all the buffalo because buffalo roam and, you know, that's how that goes. But also the Native American tribes, a lot of them would roam with the traveling herds of the buffalo. So they would make sure to kill like, you know, just enough buffalo for them to survive. But they would they would keep the herd. The herd itself would, will still be. So that way the herd can repopulate, the herd can move and travel, and they travel along and stuff like that. Now, they realized, the government realized that that was very critical to the lifestyle of these people. So they paid people for every head. So they made sure people were just hunting buffalo, not because they needed to, but because they knew the Native Americans needed the buffalo. And they were just trying to once again take down their way of life and culture before they converted them over into the American system. Um, you know, again, those schools I talked about before, that was around the same time. So imagine they take away your whole way of living. They put you in these schools. And then the same thing that's happening to these buffalo is what happens to the people who go to those schools, most of them, you know? It's unfortunate. You look at this photo. What, what's this? A bunch of skulls. What did I say earlier? A bunch of unmarked graves. It's it's literally the same. It's crazy tactics. And think of how many buffalo this is. Think of how many. If each one of these is one buffalo, think of how many buffaloes represent this whole photo. This guy's holding one in his hand. But all these are other ones. Those are thousands upon thousands of buffaloes. That just got taken out right here. This may be a million buffalo right here. For all we know. This may be over. 
I'm guessing this is over 100,000 buffaloes right here. Buffalo skulls. That means a lot of buffaloes are gone, guys. I, you know, and what do you do? How do you come back from stuff like that? That That's why this is so sad, because this represents almost the complete death of a society, a culture, and a way of living. And, you know, now we wonder why there's so little Native Americans around. That's I wonder whatever happened to the state of Indiana. You know, if you ever learn, just look up the look up why it's called Indiana, guys. I, I just want you guys to look up, do some research. Comment below if you know why the state of Indiana is called the state of Indiana. And now think of why it's so messed up for that, the schools, all the stuff. The photo we're looking at right now. Again, look up why Indiana is called the state of Indiana. So it makes Buffalo. Sense. That's going to piss off some Native Americans. Speaking of oh, which, yeah. there's often a misconception that Native Americans were a constant threat. Not true. No. In fact, quite the opposite. Native outposts were extremely useful trading sites yeah, to... Because Native Americans are good people. Gee, oh my gosh, it's so frustrating. Because these, they were constantly helpful. Replenish Always. food and other supplies. Natives also served as experienced tour guides, escorting some pioneers through rougher terrain like forests and rivers. Granted, there were a few deadly altercations between well, yeah, pioneers and natives, usually a result of pioneers being paranoid and shooting at natives unprovoked. About 800 yeah. natives and pioneers were killed thanks to sheer stupidity. Oh well, the wagons repaired, so... Yeah, because I don't know if you guys know this, uh, but it's not even just Americans. People are dumb. So let's say you meet 10 people you know, you go out in the world, you meet 10 people. I promise you, seven of them are dumb. And you, if you can't figure out which seven of them are, you're one of the seven. You know, it's like three smart people for every, you know, 10 people around. You know, the numbers are incredibly low. You know, the numbers for like people who just do dumb stuff and, you know, just say like it's it's crazy. There are a lot of dumb people in the world. Time to get back to it. You know a lot of them. You continue traveling on for a few more months, passing by more forts and giant rocks, but... I love how many Legend of Zelda references there are in this. There are so many Zelda references in this video right now. Things have been pretty quiet. Wait, why is everything so quiet? Oh yeah, your family. They're probably fine. You then no. break out of your reminiscing when something catches your eye in the distance. There it is! The end of the line and a ticket to a new life, Oregon City. That's in Oregon. All that's left between you and salvation is a huge freaking river, the Columbia River. You can't exactly cross it, so you're gonna need to ford it. You waterproof your wagon, but you still need a raft to hold everything. Yeah, oh. this is where carpentry skills come back into play. Again, I'm an expert carpenter, banker, doctor, uh, sewer, all the things, Hunter, this is gonna be light work right here. This one river, all I gotta do is cross this. Oh, but building a sturdy Breeze. enough raft is just gonna be impossible. No, is what not for a non-carpenter would say. Exactly. <laughs> Boom. It's river time. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. This river ain't nothing. I mean, that was the one, I would've avoided the rock. You guys may not have avoided the rock, but I would've avoided that. For, that's this for game, you. Game sucks. Oh, that's much better. Yeah. So yeah, guys. I think I thoroughly explained uh, why I actually would have survived. Um, I actually enjoyed this "Why You Wouldn't Survive" series and me explaining why I would survive uh, because it actually brings into perspective why you guys wouldn't survive and why I would. That's what it does for me. It helps me realize why I'm so great. And you know, again, I would like literally help as many of you guys as I could, but I'm only one guy, and I know I'm surviving. So I can't be brought down by everybody, but I will help as many people as I can. Uh, guys, this was another great video. Shout outs to uh, Chat History. Make sure you guys subscribe to Chat History. Uh, like, comment, uh, subscribe, all the stuff, all the good stuff, guys. He makes incredible content.
And honestly, I'm super like I can't wait for him to do another one of these because I'm gonna I'm gonna be here and I'm gonna be telling you guys why I would survive because there's no you can't even disprove anything I said in the video. It was so perfect. It was so reasonably explained. There was no hyperbole or anything. It was just straight up, just like oh my gosh. Now that I think about it, he would be able to convert all those carpenter skills into every other life saving skill needed in the Oregon Trail. I know, I know some of you guys don't think about it. Some of you guys are like, oh man, I don't think you can convert being a carpenter into being a doctor. But then again, look at you guys, not being a carpenter slash doctor slash banker. I'm just saying, if anybody out there who's a carpenter slash banker slash uh, doctor, let me know, you might disprove me, but you're not. So as always, thank you. <laughs> I love you. Bye. <laughs>